Good morning. Hello, and thank you for coming to our panel on careers in computer science. Uh, I'm Joey Knapp. I am the Teals Regional Manager for Northern California and Wyoming. Uh, Teals is a program of Microsoft that works with schools and teachers who want to teach computer science classes. Uh, we help them find amazing people like our panelists, um, computer science experts and professionals who are willing to volunteer at the school and help the teacher uh, teach and learn computer science. Uh, I, I wanted to check before we get started, um, who here in the audience is already in a Teals class? Can you type the name of your school if you are in a Teals class, please? See, Tranquility. more tranquility folks that's great happy to see you central california here any other teals classes just type your name type the name of the school if you are in a teals class into the chat uh, make sure that it says um all panelists and attendees And then, um, yeah, I'd love to see if there's anyone else in, in any uh, computer science class. If there's any computer science class, can you type the name of your school? Tranquility is going hard. That's great. And then uh, if you're if you're in school, <laughs> uh, if you're in school, uh, can you uh, uh, just put in your, your school, even if you're not in a computer science class? Oh, I see. Okay, well, we are gonna start in a little bit. Uh, you know, log in when you, when you are able to, uh, if you're having tech difficulties. Being also that not everyone <laughs> saw that. Uh, but great to have Hayward joining us. All right. Um, so we are gonna get started. Uh, and it is my pleasure to introduce our moderator, Ms. Manju Sardana. Uh, Ms. Sardana is a math and computer science teacher at Prospect High in Saratoga. She is a native of Delhi, India, and has a BA in mathematics and a master's in computer science. She worked for Intel, leading the data modeling team before transitioning to teaching. She's been teaching for 15 years. Uh, Ms. Sardana has two AP computer science A classes in the TEALS program. And um, Ms. Sardana, are your students joining us this morning? Uh, not this morning, sorry. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Um, well, I'd love for everyone to uh, help me in welcoming Ms. Sardana and our panelists this morning. Thank you all. Thank you, Joey. I'm so excited to be here with you and I'm here with some lovely panelists in a variety of tech roles who will share with us about their career in computer science. And before we start, I would love to get some response from you. Oops, not here. I was trying to share my other documents. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So before we begin, if you can say hello in the chat window and could respond to this prompt. <laughs> laundry, dishes. Yes, I would love to have a robot for each one of those. 
cooking. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, so this will be an interactive panel for you all. So please use the chat for questions, reactions, or if you're answering to any of the questions. Um, so without further ado, let, let's start with some introductions. Um, Sander, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, so I work in robotics. Uh, I, I started long ago. Um, you know, building robots when I was when I was young. I did programming when I was in middle school, um, and th that's kind of when I got into it. Um, and it's kind of been a progression for me. I, I actually went to college for mechanical engineering, so sort of a different path. Um, but that kind of coalesced into a love for robotics and hardware and software and the, where it all hits hits each other. That kind of intersection, and so. Uh, over the years, I've kind of gotten into building all sorts of cool robots. Um, I've had jobs building quadcopters and nice. robots, robots that do um, do all sorts of things. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Mm -hmm. And we also have with us Denise, Denise Martinez. Hi, Are you yeah. here? Uh, yeah, my name is Denise Martinez. I'm a software engineer at Riot Games. Um, I've been at Riot for about six years. Uh, I actually started as QA. I do have a background in computer science. I went to Cal State Long Beach for computer science. Um, I have actually kind of didn't really know what programming was. When, you know, I, I'm a first generation college student. Uh, my parents came to America, uh, you know, uh, to, to work uh, from Mexico and didn't get the opportunity to go to school. Um, I actually did take AP Computer Science in high school. I was introduced to it. I, like, I, I, at that time I had like, I did like a, a little bit of HTML and CSS. And so I got like, I, you know, it was uh, quite enlightening to learn more about, you know, the, how, how different and how much depth and, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, and so I continued uh, that pursuit and um, yeah, eventually graduated and have been working at Riot for quite some time. Uh, did, uh, I've been working on the, their, I started off in their patcher team. So I, I worked uh, on the product that updates their game um, and then uh, now work on the, the uh, desktop client. So we are building the, um, the the client for 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 the game and for the uh, we're trying to build that something out that supports our uh, uh, all of the games that we have right now. Wow, that is so cool. So, how long did you say you've been working at Riot? Uh, for six years. So I was a QA for about two, and then um, uh, and then worked my and then worked uh, to I've been officially an engineer for two years, but have been like an engineer without a title for like the remaining remaining amount of time. But yeah, mm -hmm. been there for about six years now. Wow, wow, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Denise. I'll let actually everyone quickly introduce and then we can um, feel free to ask questions in the chat window. We have Carl uh, Shen with us today. Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Carl. Uh, I work as a senior data scientist at LinkedIn on the economic research team, uh, but I'm also a Bay Area native. I grew up in the San Jose Bay Area. Is anybody here in chat, does anybody here in chat uh, go to school middle or high school in the Bay Area? If so, can you type your name uh, or if you can type the name of your school in chat, that'd be great. I just wanna see if there's representation. I saw one Harker in chat. Is there anyone else yeah. uh, who, who attends school in the Bay Area? We'd love to see that. Um, but while you're all typing that, uh, just as a very, very brief comment, I would say that um, unlike the Mies, I did not take computer science in high school, I actually, the first CS class I ever took was in college. And I went to college thinking it'd be a philosophy major uh, for all sorts of reasons. That did not end up coming true. I was not a philosophy major. I ended up studying kind of more math and stats and then eventually getting more into computer science after I graduated. So I didn't really learn how to program until my, my sophomore year in, in college, unlike some of you who are taking CS classes. Um, but like Denise, I also played around with HTML and CSS when I was in high school. I, want, I had my own little website that I had built on Zanga. I wanted to make it look really cool. I tried to give it a purple background. I tried to put music on it. And uh, that was my first time kind of like fiddling around with, with actual code. Uh, and that was also very uh, transformative. And so I really enjoyed that. And that's partially why later on in college, I decided to kind of take a few CS classes and then work professionally in it. So that's a little about me. Wow, so uh, from philosophy to computer science. So what sparked that interest? 
what made you do, you know, move from, what a transition. Uh, very briefly, uh, I was interested in philosophy because this is going to sound really cliche, but it's true. I was really interested in the meaning of life. I thought people who studied philosophy studied that. I took my first few philosophy classes and I was like, people who don't study philosophy do not study that. They study really like unnecessarily complicated stuff. And uh, long story short, I thought about who's studying the actual practical, useful stuff about like the purpose of life. And it turned out to be actually the stats department. People in stats are really interested in actually measuring the real world and trying to figure out like, what do we know, what do we not know, and kind of quantifying that. So uh, that's essentially why I ended up becoming a stats major. Sure. We also have uh, one more uh, person on our panel today, Segnor Joseph, if you could introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Sengor. Um, like many of us here, I also did not originally start off on the computer science path. Um, I am currently an electrical engineer at a medical research and development firm in Newark. And um, I also build web tools for that, uh, for my employer. I, I do uh, freelancing on the side. I started off, um, both of my parents are electrical engineers. So I started off with like the Arduino platform. I got a little bit of coding in there. And all of a sudden I was, I was pretty hooked on software, um, but I was pretty confident I wanted to be electrical. I got to college. I took my first uh, intro computer science class. I think it was Python. And at the end of the year, I just had this huge crisis. Like, do I want to continue with electrical? Do I want to go down the computer science path? I ended up sticking with electrical engineering just because um, I really had a passion for it. And I could still take um, the computer science classes that I wanted to take in college. Um, so that ended up being a good path for me. I also, uh, like I said, I do web stuff. So I, I started touching the, uh, the HTML, the CSS, the JavaScript. Um, so that seems to be a pretty familiar path for most of us here. Um, yeah, and that's that's mostly me. Thank you. Thank you, Signal. I don't think I'm saying your name right. Tell me one more time. Sangor. Sangor, thank you. Yes. And um, so uh, again, feel free to ask questions. We'd love to know more about what your life is like in the tech world. Um, we can start with you, uh, Carl, or can, can you tell us a little bit about what your day is like at LinkedIn? Yeah, I can. Um, I can briefly describe that. I actually also have a short presentation full of pictures. I wanted to show you all that could be helpful. Um, and I think I, my Wi-Fi is strong enough right now where I can share it myself. I can so I'm gonna try doing that. I can share it for you if you want. Okay, yeah, if you don't mind bringing that up. Yeah. So I, I wanted to very, very briefly just talk a little bit about like some misconceptions I had about like programmer and tech life and all that stuff uh, and share maybe some of the realities. Uh, at least I want to say my reality. I'm sure other panelists have different experiences. So um, I, I see a lot of folks in chat uh, also typing along. And if you have questions or comments, feel free to type it. I read it. I respond to it. This is the closest I'm ever going to get to becoming a famous Twitch streamer. Like like talking at the camera, but also reading like chat on the side and responding. So like, <laughs> that makes me feel cool. So keep on, keep at it. Anyways, um, I wanna talk about expectations versus reality, at least for me. So uh, if you don't mind going to the, the uh, two slides from now, yeah. talk about some of the, the myths, the stereotypes and reality. Next, yeah. So when I was studying computer science, I thought to myself, wow, like if you don't mind going back one slide, Manju, mm -hmm. I thought it was like, wow, like my days are gonna be in front of the computer like this, and just staring at it. And then everything on my computer is gonna be like from the movie, The Matrix, like <laughs> black text and like all sorts of crazy things. And I'm just typing like 500 words per minute on my keyboard and you know, like chugging down Red Bulls or something. So that's, you know, a stereotype that you maybe you see in movies. Uh, and I'm sure some people have a life that's kind of like that. But if you go to the next slide, I actually wanna show you what my calendar looks like. So this is my calendar, this is my typical day. I wow. get up, I go to work at nine or 9.30. I typically end work at 5.30. And there's a bunch of events on my calendar, but next slide, please. Okay. The main stuff I wanna show you is the stuff I just outlined in blue is the stuff that we're actually do programming. That's where I actually do the, the whatever, the matrix stuff. And it doesn't even look like the matrix. It's just me typing on like a keyboard uh, to text file. All the other stuff, which I had never thought about during the course of my time in college is like meetings, reading other people's code and a few other things I'm gonna show you in a second. Uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. One of the big things that I spent a lot of time doing, and this may be very disappointing to some of you, but it's a reality, is responding to emails. Like when I was in school, I was like, oh, people who go to work, like they're probably doing important stuff. And then I got to work and people who are at work, what they do is emails. And I was like, why is email one of the most like 
Why, why is that the artifact of work that everybody does? It was crazy to me. But I respond to emails. I send a bajillion emails. It's it's uh it's necessary and it's a necessary evil in my opinion. Next slide, please. And like I'll send I'll send emails like this, where I'll be like, hey guys, this is what I worked on. This is what I'm doing. Here's a bunch of stuff I need your feedback on. Here are the action items I need to follow up on. And like this takes up you know like 30 minutes just to draft this email. And I'm not even sure people read it, but you know it's useful uh, for me to also remember what I was doing and document my work. But at the same time, I'm, I'm sort of like, man, this is not what I thought my life would be like uh, kind of in the field of tech. Next slide, please. Something that's a little bit more exciting that I do like doing is actually reading technical documentation. I like my company, you know, when people want to say, hey, let's build this thing, they make a giant Google Doc. And the giant Google Doc has the proposal, has the idea of like what we're building, how we build it, who's going to be building what. And uh, then they ask for feedback. They send that email around, again, email, uh, and they ask for feedback. And that is actually more productive, more useful, in my opinion, to understand how other people are thinking, what teams are building. And so this is a part of my job I do like. Next slide, please. Another part of the job that I really like is I participate in my team Slack a lot. And we have all sorts of, uh, if you don't know what Slack is, Slack is like Discord, except it's Discord for work. So what we do is we chat about all sorts of stuff. One of my favorite channels is uh, the dog picture channel. Employees <laughs> of my company, they post pictures of their dog and we comment on it. And we put emojis on it. And then we try to one up each other with other pictures of our dogs. That's one of my favorite things. Uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. Like many of you who are now, uh, like many of you who are now learning from home um, and many of us who are, you know, presenting from home, uh, a huge part of my day is dealing with technical issues. And the reality is like my Wi-Fi is really bad. So a lot of my meetings look like this. It says waiting for net network. And behind that is a blurred picture of one of my teammates. He's trying to talk to me, except that's not working because my Wi-Fi is not good enough to hear him. Uh, so that's what I deal with. Probably, some of you probably deal with this. I deal with broken links all the time to documentation. And finally, last slide. Most of the time I spend programming. Yes, you know I do some coding, but a huge chunk of it is debugging. I'll write some code and then I'll be like, why doesn't this work? And then I'll write some more code. I'll ask some friends for help to help me solve it. And I'll still be like, it works, but I still know why it works. And so I think there's a, a, a lot of these layers that I didn't really understand when I was thinking about a tech job, but just hopefully this adds a little bit more color and flavor to, to what it feels like. So I'm gonna pause here because I just talked a lot and I'll, I'll give the other panelists a chance to share a little bit more about their experiences too. Thank you, Carl. This is great to know what your day is like. Good chunk is meetings and emails and uh, you know the rest second half is really coding. Uh, anybody else who would like to share a little bit about their day? Yeah, so I, I definitely related to a lot of what Caro had in this uh, presentation. Um, I also thought I was just going to get to just write code and not have to really deal with people. <laughs> um, and it's completely, it's it's very, very much like, my, my calendar looks very similar to Carl's. You got to have, you, you, there's a, a lot of meetings and a lot of planning that goes in, in, in into building good software, uh, a lot of a lot of stakeholder meetings and um, a lot of design meetings. Uh, it's been a little more challenging with uh, with COVID and working from home. Um, I really do miss that about working in a in a in an in office environment where you know if you were really stuck on something and just needed to ideate with someone that like you could just pull them into a room and, and go onto a whiteboard. That's something I really miss. Um, but yeah, very much so. There's a lot of meetings that take place. Um, and then you kind of, you know, maybe get four hours if you're lucky to write code. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I, I've definitely grown a, a lot of, of soft skills while working at, at Riot. And mm -hmm. just like as a, as a software engineer, you, you definitely have to kind of lean into that um, because you... Um, it's just not all about coding. You like you won't really get far if all you know if you're not really a collaborative type of person who's willing to to work uh, with others and challenge and 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 challenge and and on, on different types of problems. True. So in CS world, basically, it's not coding is one part, but then a lot of exactly. soft skills, managing a lot of other things. Yeah. yeah. And Sandra, how does um, that compared to your work day? Uh, are you working from home? You're on a robotics team. Are you working from home or in person? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, COVID has definitely been an interesting challenge for us. Um, but uh, so 
I started my career in as an individual contributor. And basically what that means is I would do a lot of coding and mostly work on my own projects. And generally I've worked at small startups. So a lot of my work has been very self-guided and, and I've owned most of the work that I do and not a huge amount of interaction with other people. Um, however, recently I've been uh, put into more of a manager position. Um, and what that means is that I kind of have to balance some individual contributor work with also helping to manage a bunch of other people on the team. And so my team is small right now, but we, we're growing and, and essentially I'm learning how to um, interact with those people and help them learn and help them get their work done better and faster and, and to higher quality. Um, and so that's, a, that's definitely an interesting learning experience for me. Uh, but it, it's it's a lot of fun and and um, I, I really enjoy it and I think you know uh, you end up having to become more of a people person as well when you get into a position like that. Sure. So one of the questions I see in the chat window is: Do you really need a CS degree to have a job like this, or um, you know can can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh sure. Um, I would say you definitely do, do not need to have a CS or a master's degree. Um, I think it's good to have some formal education in CS, but it doesn't necessarily have to come from one place or another. I mean, the, I, a lot of my training was self-guided, um, which means that I, I was working, uh, you know, I was doing stuff on the side that was just projects that, that were interesting to me. And that that kind of spurred my interest and I learned and I read and all the information you need is on the internet. Um, and and you can really you can really learn a lot that way. Nice. Thanks. Thanks, um, Sander. And I see another question and I think this would uh, be more for you, Denise. It says how hard for women to how hard is it for women to get in CS major college and find a job in CS? Um, um, let me see if I, am I understand the question correctly. So is, the question is how hard uh, how hard is it for a woman to to get accepted into computer science? I guess it, it, it's uh, I think well, computer science major in college as well as finding a job. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, I think I didn't really have a hard time getting into my CS program. Um, I, I think. Um, and I actually, uh, like you, Carl, I first started out in history when I when I first got into college. I really just wanted to learn about, uh, you know, just the history of the world. So because you learn, you know, you're you're better off as a human being if you kind of don't repeat your mistakes. And uh, but then I realized that I like I, I just really liked programming. So I switched majors, and it wasn't really that hard. I went to I went to my uh, college uh, advisor, and I went to the CS department, and I, I, I switched over. Even I, they, they did advise me that I needed, you know, hey, you were taking, you were doing um, a, a BA program. Now you're switching over to BS. It's gonna, you know, now you have to do all like take these math courses and blah blah blah. Are you willing to do that? And I said yes, 100%. Um, and I switched over. And uh, it's, you know, back when I went to school, there weren't a lot of women in the program, so like <laughs> it does feel kind of isolating. Uh, and uh, but I, I think I did, I did have like there were like probably two other women in, in my program to be perfectly candid. I think that's definitely changed. Um, uh, so like finding, uh, and we like kind of grouped up and, and studied together and, and I joined like the, uh, wi the women in engineering club. Um, and, and I think because of that, that really helped me kind of form like a community. Uh, I think that's really important, especially in a, in a, in a program that uh, you, where you're like kind of the only one there, it, it, it can be very lonely. So I, I definitely, I recommend when in college, like joining clubs, finding and building a community that can help you, um, you know, succeed. Otherwise it's, it can be pretty isolating. Um, and in terms of work, um, uh, so I think like at least at Riot, uh, so I've been there six years. There were, at the beginning, there weren't a lot of women specifically in tech. There are a lot of women at Riot. There's so many different roles at Riot. Like we have so many different industries there, you know, from like, you know, music to art to, you know, uh, tech. Uh, so like there, there were a lot, I saw, uh, you know, there's recruiting and, and law, uh, legal and all this type of stuff. So uh, I, I did see a lot of women, but not specifically in the roles that I wanted to be in at the beginning. That has definitely changed now um, there uh, and, and, 
we're we're definitely growing. So I, I think def, uh, I highly recommend pursuing it. Get an internship, like apply to those dream internships you want, because I think that'll definitely get you give you the uh, the leg up that you need. If you're like not sure if you want to pursue like a master's or whatever, I, I think definitely try to get an internship while you're while you're getting your bachelor's. Um, wow. That'll definitely help you get your your dream job at the end mm-hmm. of the at the end of your um uh, when you graduate from your bachelor's. So don't be afraid of don't be afraid. science. Yes, uh, especially if you're a woman, if a woman, if anything else, I think you will have a better chance. I think colleges and schools are encouraging diversity. You know, and uh, women. I, I, being a CS teacher, I'm always trying to tell my pre-cal students to come and join my APCS class and try it out. You know, and not be afraid of uh, taking CS. Yeah, I actually am on a team now that has uh, three. Uh, we, we work in pretty small, like team so I have uh, uh, three women on my team that are engineers and it's like it, it like from when I first was on my first team it was just all guys and getting to like it, it, yeah I'm just seeing the change now so I like please don't be afraid come join us um there's also communities on like discord twitter now that you can you know always reach out to there's uh you know we're all here to to uplift each other that's true that's true thank you thank you Denise mm-hmm. So um, Senghor, you are at uh, Triple Ring Technologies. You're a hardware engineer. Tell us a little bit about what your workday is like. Yeah, it's actually quite similar to the, the many meetings and a little bit of heads down time that we've been seeing. Um, you'll meet, talk about designs, argue a bit about requirements, say, mm-hmm. oh no, they really meant this. No, it means that. And then you, know, you spend a bit of time just saying, all right, this is what we're gonna do. You go and do it and you come and meet the next day and say, what have you done? Um, that's, it's pretty cyclical. Um, I work on a bunch of cross-functional teams. So we'll have hardware, we'll have mechanical, we'll have software, we'll have embedded, which is we, we call firmware. And so you have to be able to have the soft skills to be able to talk to each of those people and say, okay, I'm doing this and I know that affects you this X, Y, Z. Um, and so even if you, you, you know, take the CS classes and you end up saying, you know, CS really isn't for me, at least you have some of the soft skills to say, okay, I know that um, they need to do X, Y, Z to accommodate something that I'm making. And you have some of that understanding, which I think is really important um, when you're working just anywhere, really, mm-hmm. being able to work with other people. Sure, sure. Let's hear a little bit about um, some project experience. So um, maybe we can start with you, Shan, if you can tell us what, um, your, uh, what has been your experience with the first programming project at work? Is that meant for me? Car, yes, sir. Yes, okay, great. So uh, I'll, I'll talk about a few different projects. Um, one project that I work on at work is analyzing a lot of macroeconomic data. So my job as a researcher and what I do is I publish research for governments as well as for journalists to read about and to write about. And one of the studies I recently worked on that involves a good amount of programming, because to do this research, you have to kind of figure out how to get the data, clean the data, build a statistical model from the data, is what happened to people who graduated during the last recession in 2008, because that could inform what's going to happen to people now who are graduating in the middle of this sort of other economic downturn that we're we're in due to COVID. Uh, And so that project was a lot of data cleaning, was a lot of data analysis. And it resulted in a presentation to about 40 different uh, representatives from different newspaper companies, including the New York Times, uh, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal. And I gave this large research presentation about what happened. And to make a long story short, uh, if you graduate during a recession, it definitely sucks for the short term, but the long-term effects on your employment outcomes don't seem to be that severe. So 10 years down the road, you're likely to be very close to where you would have been if you graduated during you know, normal times. So that's you know positive news, hopefully, for, for some of you who may be uh, going into kind of a, a worse economy than, than other classmates in previous years. Mm-hmm. Anybody else who'd like to share a little bit about their experience, uh, project experience, uh, whatever your first project was like, just to get a better idea. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I can talk to about my first project as QA. So like as uh, when I first started, um, like I said, I started on the Patcher team. Uh, we were trying to upgrade the, uh, the first thing we wanted to do was upgrade the Patcher because it was like, uh, just notoriously bad. Um, like, I don't know if you know the history about League of Legends, it was just kind of put together by like a group of people in a, 
it, it, it was very rushed essentially. So, um, and, and the patcher was like one of those things that, hey, we need something to work. Uh, it was just an afterthought basically so um with like we wanted to release new games we wanted to keep a, th a thing with we wanted to ensure that we um with player retention and patching was one of those things especially in countries like latin america or or places that have bandwidth caps like it, it, we want to make sure that that is a solid experience so that's the first thing we worked on um so i uh, i got my first like I started writing like unit tests and things like that. I didn't actually get like we uh, I helped one of the senior arch principal architects at Riot um, who built out the chunking patcher, which is like this really advanced patcher. Uh, I learned a lot from that. Um, and yeah, uh, I, I have a lot of other stuff. I've been there for a while. I, then I went over, I started working on like back end services. I, I wrote some services in Golang. Um, uh, like the tests were really Python, so basically Python, C++, Golang for services, and now I'm back on the desktop client, so I'm back in C++. So, uh, and then uh, I'm going to start to do a little bit more of the front end for the desktop client, so I'm going to get to do JavaScript, which is like my, exciting. I've never, yeah, it's super exciting. Well, nice, nice. Anybody else would like to share? Sure, I can talk. Um, so, I started my career, uh, I actually got my first job at uh, Hewlett Packard. Um, it was in their lab research division. Um, and it was a really crazy job. Basically, I was on this small group on this small team where they were using machine learning to do some really interesting stuff kind of before machine learning was a big thing. Um, and the, what they wanted me to do was take drones and fly them together. So that they so that they could all like coordinate on tasks, and so mm -hmm. my job was to basically coordinate a bunch of drones with code and uh, wow. understand how the, and move them around so cool. and get them to. Fl and so what that ended up being was me crashing uh, a <laughs> lot of drones into a lot of walls over and over and over. <laughs> again. Um, but it was a really fun job, um, and and I and I will say this one thing that. Um, I would recommend everybody do is, uh, and it's the way that I got this job, is that um, I wrote a blog uh, about things that I enjoyed doing. And somebody actually posted at the bottom of my blog, hey, do you want a job? Oh. <laughs> and, oh. and so uh, I would recommend everyone, if you have an interest, no matter what it is, and you want to do that as a career, make, make a blog about it and start and start blogging and and just put in put stuff up it doesn't matter what it is um put stuff in your field up there and you like people will see it and it's it, even no matter how small it is it, people will see it wow wait, do so you have any recommendations for where to host uh what, what where would you where did you put your blog up um it's just on blogspot mm. um yeah it's uh let's see i can <laughs> um I, I actually don't remember. Oh, it's sanderbot.com. You can, uh, I can put it in the chat here. <laughs> so awesome. This is so good to hear how you landed up with your first job. Uh, yeah. Wow. And um, what else? Um, any, anyone in the audience interested in a tech job? If you're considering a job in tech, you can say, yeah, come, you can either use a reaction, yeah, thing or send. Put it in the chat window if you're interested in a tech job or you're thinking about it, maybe. Um, there are some questions about certs, uh, like certifications for people that are interested in going to IT. Is that correct, Carl? Sure. I see you responding. Um, so I, I the IT know. side, you're right. And I'm yeah. programming on my own time. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, so. I have a few uh, few friends that are in IT, and I think getting certs, especially if, if you're going to be working in like North America, AWS is like kind of the powerhouse here. So getting certified with AWS is like a really good thing, especially if you're trying, you know, trying to land your first job. It'll really help you stick out um, uh, in IT, I, I, especially uh, yeah, since a lot of people don't, a lot of companies are really moving towards the cloud. So having experience with with uh, cloud computing and a AWS specifically how to like manage things in AWS is, is extremely beneficial. Not a requirement, like you can also just, AWS has like a ton of documentation and, and resources that you could just pick up on your own time for free. Um, there is like a cost, like if you want to learn how to like, uh, you know, ship, con uh, build uh, containers and, and put host them on AWS, you kind of have to pay, you might have to pay a little money, but, uh, but definitely, uh, 
because certs can be very expensive. So the, the, don't let that bar you. Uh, if they're, you know, there's, uh, they have all those resources are available online for, for free on AWS's websites. Thank you. And David, you're not alone. Even I changed, uh, I did the reverse move from IT to teaching and um, I'm enjoying it. I started as a math teacher, but getting into learning Java and Teams team has been so helpful. Uh, you know, teaching my class and myself, getting back to Java. And um, let's see, I'm not able to cope up uh, with all the questions in the chat window, but I'll try. And I know, thank you all the, to all the panelists. I know you are typing in and responding. Uh, let's hear a little bit about how has uh, the pandemic changed uh, the work you're doing right now? Signor, uh, we can start with you. Yeah, I can start with that. Um, so. Like I mentioned, I'm a hardware engineer. So usually I'm in the office like touching things, but uh, that generally hasn't been the case. Um, I've actually started drifting into uh, making some software, internal software tools for our company. Uh, we have a lot of database management that we do in Excel that I'm uh, shifting over to like MongoDB or other you know databases that we can host. So if the document crashes, for example, you don't lose a whole bunch of data. You have a bit of replication through multiple databases on our server. Um, I've still been doing some electrical stuff. I still do designs. I still, you know, host design reviews on those designs, but I'm just not in the office uh, touching physical circuit boards. Sure. Yep. Anybody else? Things have changed for you during pandemic? I'm very much on the same side as Sangor. Um, I, we have robots in the office um, that I, I actually go in probably once a week, um, but I used to, you know, I used to work on them every single day. So it's a, that is a bit of a difference, um, but yeah. Sure, sure. And uh, please keep typing questions in the chat window and I'm sure um, people are responding. And somebody has a question about how do you change from IT to teaching? I'll briefly tell you, dep depending on where you teach, uh, if it's a private school, you don't need a certification, but if you're teaching in public school, you have to kind of go back get your uh, credentials and teach. Um, if you are planning to teach from IT, I think Teals would be a great place to start. Uh, volunteer your time. I think we have some of our panelists who are in the Teals team and they're actually teaching. You can share with us about your experience. And uh, this is a great way to find out what it is to be a teacher, to be in classroom with the students and see if that's really what you want to do. Do you really want to change? Any of our Teals volunteers who are teaching who want to share this experience? I can, I can share a little bit, but before I do that, something I would love to clarify with the audience is, you know, there's like, it sounds like there's 33 participants in here. My, my initial impression is that a lot of the audience were, were students and it certainly sounds like a lot are, but some of the comments made have made it clear to me that some of the some of the people watching this are not students. Uh, David, it's, you said that you are formerly were an IT, you're now a teacher. Ching, uh, from your... From your uh, Carl, breaking a bit. Sounds like you're have your bachelor's and and we'll soon more you're thinking you know what you do and, and maybe what questions you have as well so that we can tailor some thoughts there oh sorry am i breaking up you are breaking up a bit yeah it's oh, oh. Get lost. <laughs> oh, no. that's okay it's much better sorry. now Carl. you're fine okay. <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna call in by phone right after i finish this this, this point but um yeah if you if you don't have a background as a high school student or middle school student please let us know uh what you're here for and would love to just kind of get that sense yeah. Uh, very briefly, I worked as a software engineer, and then I became a high school teacher. I taught high school for three years in San Mateo, California. And then last year, I transitioned back into tech, which is where I work now in LinkedIn. Uh, and I, I have some thoughts about each of those things. But if you're thinking about transitioning into teaching, one piece of advice I would have is to first perhaps do a substitute teaching gig. I had substitute teach taught, and I also uh, did was a teacher aide for uh, four months at an elementary school. And that gave me the confidence and, and realization that, wow, I really like this. I really enjoy this. I think I could be good at this. Uh, so just kind of, just like people say, do internships, you can kind of do an internship in teaching first by being a substitute teacher or by uh, being a teacher aide. That's, that'd be something. Anybody else? I think we have more uh, teams volunteers here uh, teaching in a high school. Yeah, like uh, I can speak. Uh, oh, go ahead, Sengor. Okay, um, yeah, so um, I'm teaching up in San Lorenzo, Kip King, and um, yeah, we, last year I, I taught there as well. I was teaching in person and, you know, building rapport with students, getting to understand, you know, how to manage the gaps between how 
quick, different students learn. Some learn quickly, some, you know, you need to work with them a bit more often. Um, that's definitely uh, something that you get some hands-on experience with, even as a TA, as a TEALS volunteer. Um, it's, it's really helped me understand a bit uh, about the pedagogy, the teaching side of things. Um, doing it remotely, it has changed it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you have to watch people's faces on the screens to try and get visual cues to see if, if people are understanding, really reach out to them and chat and see, okay, hey, you know, it looks like you, you may have missed some part of this, you know, can I help you with anything? Do you have any questions? Um, but really engaging with the students and really trying to build a rapport with them um, and just trying to understand, even as a TEALS volunteer, will give you that insight um, and help you understand if you wanna be, you know, a, a teacher or not, or continue into the teaching field. Yeah. Denise, you were saying, thank you, Sango, you were saying something, Denise? Yeah, so this is actually my first time uh, uh, volunteering with TEALS. I was, uh, I've always been really interested in, in teaching um, and just kind of specifically because, you know, like I personally had some great teachers in my life that like helped me, uh, you know, believe in myself. And I kind of just wanted to give that back because there, you know, I, uh, for those teachers that I had, there were some that I like that were very discouraging. So I kind of wanted to be like, okay, I want to do my part and be that person for people, especially early on in high school when you're kind of just, you know, you're not really sure if this is really for you. So I, like, I, I wanted to get that experience. Uh, I did actually, want, I did want to teach AP computer science, but the school that was the closest to me didn't offer it so um but that actually turned out to be really great because it's it's pretty challenging teaching intro because you're not able to really like right. lean on the like concept like just the terminology you got to really break it down and and so it's it's definitely uh helped me um just it's a great challenge uh and it really tests your uh your knowledge because if you can break it down like to the simplest of forms and you're like you're pretty you're pretty it shows mastery basically but it, with COVID it's been uh, in the, being my first time teaching and having to do this stuff remotely as, that has been very challenging for me personally especially the the for, at least for the school that we're teaching at um because of COVID like policies like the classes were cut a little bit more so there was just some things that I wasn't expecting um but overall it's been a very rewarding experience and I can't wait like I, I definitely want to keep doing this and get, keep getting that like practice sure. because it's it's just a very rewarding experience yeah personally I cannot thank all the teams volunteer teachers enough I you know I have some of them helping me with two of my computer science courses I cannot thank you enough uh, you all are such great role models for the students and, um, you know, it, it means a world, you know, just seeing and talking to people who are already in the tech world, what they're doing and uh, imagining themselves to be there. It's, it's, it's really awesome. And I hear uh, people want to uh, know a little bit about internships, if they can, how can they get internships? And I, uh, I know what, uh, San, Sandra, you shared how you wrote a blog. What an interesting way to land up with your first job, but uh, any, any, insights or any thoughts on how people can land with their first internships, people who are just starting it out, anybody? So I actually, I posted the uh, link to the, so Riot summer internship programs uh, applications are open. So if you're interested, um, uh, it's open for, for college students, uh, obviously. So, uh, uh, but it's, I think we're open to, it's typically around like your, third or fourth year college is typically the, where we tend to uh, uh, hire interns for. It's a really great program. Um, in terms of like uh, what recommendations I can give you, um, like personal projects, having those, like having personal projects ready to go um, that you can talk about, uh, whether that be, you know, some in school, like, uh, you know, depending on the school you go to, they'll give you some really like meaty projects. Some schools even require you to get internships as part of your graduation, uh, as part of getting a degree. I've heard that before, but working on projects, working on projects on your own time. I know that's not feasible for everyone, but like, if you can like work on something that like a pet project or something you care about, like, uh, I think that's speaks volumes to uh, hiring the like recruiters and the people interviewing you that that shows passion. Um, but yeah, I think uh, just keep working at it. Keep, uh, you know, be as uh, driven to learn on your own self uh, and, and just uh, just understand that the 
have a, a growth mindset. And you can show that to you when you get that interview. But uh, if you, once you get to that point where they're interviewing you, you know, showing that you have a growth mindset and then you're a good team collaborator, um, that'll speak volumes. And I think that would help you land the internship of personal projects for sure. That's a great uh, piece of advice, Denise. Uh, personal projects, keep learning on your own, have that growth mindset. And in today's world, so much information is available online. You can do so much learning on your own. Um, mm -hmm. Would love to uh, hear some, from some, uh, some, some more panelists about what their um, ideas are about, you know, any guidance for people who are just entering the tech world who are learning, you know, what, what else, what's the best way to get, you know, get the first job, internships, or what else can they do? I can talk about that. Yes. Um, networking is pretty good. Uh, reaching out to people at the company, especially if um, they go to your college or uh, if you know them in some other way, just reaching out to them personally, maybe talking to them. You know, it's really it's a really good time to have remote sessions with people, figure out more about the job, show them that they're in, that you're interested in the job, and then have them know your name. And then if you send them a resume, they may be able to pass it around more directly to people inside the company rather than through a job portal or any other uh, intermediary system that um, the HR manager or someone else is looking at. You get a better chance of you know, talking to someone in the company, learning more about it, and basically getting your name into the company. So well said, uh, networking is such an important thing to do to land with your first job or internships. Yeah, yeah um, I just wanted one thing to add, sure. I just I recalled. Um, so in for gaming specifically, if you're really interested in becoming like a game engineer, or game dev, um, and definitely participate in like game jams, like the global game uh, jam, uh, just getting more experience with working with people. Also, a lot of people from the industry just do these things for fun. So like if you can sign up for these things and just get that experience, uh, then you, that like will help you with not only networking, but also building that portfolio. So definitely game jams are, are a great way to, to, to like have a portfolio so that you can land that internship as well as network. Wow. So to apply for a job in uh, game industry, are you saying students need to have a portfolio ready as well in advance? With specifically for game engineering, it's uh, a lot of the um, if you, like there are programs in, in university that are like they're uh, computer science, but with a, a specialty in game and games. Um, so if you if you go that route, if you go to a school that has that program, then you don't really, you know, you, you'll have the, the portfolio basically. But yeah, it's kind of like art, you know, like it doesn't, right. you just have to have uh, experience. Like if you're trying to be a gameplay programmer, you know, you kind of have to have some experience working in game, like with uh, building out like a gameplay kind of system. So, or like learning um, one of the game engines, like, or if you've done like small projects with like Unity or Unreal, that speaks volumes too. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, that's it's very like, competitive. Yeah, like an art portfolio. That's, yeah. That's some news that for gaming, you got to do this. Anybody else uh, would like to share, you know, I'm sure any piece of advice on how to really land with your first job or what kind of things we can, you know, students can do, what kind of courses they can do to, uh, to get internships and jobs would be really helpful. All right, and feel free to type. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll very briefly share. I don't know if oh. you all hear me. Okay. Yeah, we can. Hopefully you all can hear me. I'll very briefly share something that um, this will be relevant to those of you who are applying for internships. Uh, if, if you're in high school right now, it's pretty hard to get an internship for work law reasons, uh, employment laws, but also in terms of who you're competing against. But when you uh, maybe if you choose to go on to college or if you uh, eventually end up kind of later on having more experience in applying for internships and jobs. One piece of advice I'll just share that I, I did not know is uh, a lot of companies, maybe like Riot, LinkedIn, Google, whatever, they have a lot of competition for those spots. And so the way that a application gets filtered down at large tech companies is oftentimes before a human being even has a chance to read your application, a machine algorithm scans through it and just kind of looks for certain things. For example, what's this person's GPA, uh, you know, depending on the school that they went to, do they study computer science and things like that. And then they'll rank these applications by whether they fulfilled a number of different check marks. And it, this just like throws out like half of all applications, maybe more than half actually. 
And then there's another level where a human being finally gets to it. They read it, they take the top 10% of the final stack and they pass it on to some hiring manager who, who has some spots on their team. And this person now finally makes the decision about who to interview. So there's a lot of layers. Now, the, what I'm telling you, the reason I'm telling you this is that one of the ways you shortcut a lot of that, especially the first part, uh, you know, to not get filtered out just in a giant half is you actually get a recommendation, you get a referral. So for example, let's say you know somebody at this company and they're impressed by you. You send them an email, you get to know them a little bit better. You talk to them about a position and you say, hey, I'm interested in this internship on your team. Here are my background qualifications. Can I send you my resume? If they say yes, you pass it on to them. They can pass it on directly to a human being who will now kind of uh, rank you with the other people who, who you know, are applying for this internship who've already passed that first set of filters. And this just dramatically increases the chances that your resume will get seen, you're gonna get an interview, uh, and just increase the chance you're gonna land this position. So just as a piece of advice, it's one of the reasons why kind of like these social skills, soft skills around networking, meeting people is important. Um, that's why, you know, companies like LinkedIn exists to help people network and meet people. So that's just sort of a, a something, I, a piece of advice I'd share. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Um, and I see a question about curious to see what big Navi has to offer from AMD. Any, anyone who can respond to that? Or what is a typical career arc for data sciences? These are some questions I see in the chat window. Sounds like okay. a Carl question. <laughs> <laughs> That question, but I think what I prefer is I'll prefer to answer that question in chat because I think this is very specific to me and I'll give the time back to other panelists to answer kind of more general questions, but I'll answer the question in chat. Yeah. Anybody else would like to add to this? And you can continue asking more questions in the chat window. I want to make this more meaningful for those of you who are here so you can get answers from the experts. I had some technical difficulty before, but um, I wanted to actually jump in and say something about what Carl was just talking about mm -hmm. with the um, jobs. And I, I would 100% I would agree with him that uh, networking is like super important if you're looking for a job. Um, the, the other thing that I would definitely say is to um, really just reach out to the people you want. Cause it, like, for example, right now I'm, I'm the hiring manager at, uh, on a, on a few positions at my company and we get a lot of, we got a, a lot of resumes. And one of the things is we don't have this full system of, of you know, you know, it's a very small company it's about 30 people. So we, we don't have like a computer algorithm checking all the different uh, mm -hmm. keywords and all that. We're, we're very thorough and we look through every, um, uh, uh, your resume. And so it's really important that you put exactly the best experience you can on that resume. And, and even if you tailor it um, for the job, that can really, really, really help. I would also advocate for put, doing like a cover letter or saying, just talking about why you're qualified for that position and give a little bit of like personality to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we like to see like, uh, a bit of like um, an understanding of the person, not just the job qualifications, because at the end of the day, we need to work with that person and we want to know what they're like. And that would be more in the cover letter, I'm thinking, Sandra, right? You exactly, see, yes. You don't want to just see what skills they have, but what who, who they are, just speak a little bit more about yourself in the cover letter. Yeah, and, and try to remember who your audience is. Because uh, one of the things that you see when you apply to a, a company is, that, you know, you're just applying to other people who also work in that field and who are interesting, you know, normal people who want to want to work with somebody who's interesting and, and smart and knows what they're doing. And so that it's it's just critical that you think about them when you're writing that letter. Right. Um, it needs to get that attention, initial attention, and then once right. you're in the interview, you have more opportunities to. Uh, share more options. So we have a hiring manager here, guys. <laughs> right. Sanders, so you, you're doing this, uh, you've always been doing hiring or you just started doing some? Um, so I, I've been, uh, I've been in two startups now and in both of those, I've had to do quite a bit of hiring. Um, it's just part of the job. It ends up being part of the job. I, I've probably done I, I'm trying to think how many interviews I've had to do probably in the hundreds. Um, <laughs> so I, I've interviewed a lot of people. Um, Good. Thank you. We just have about a few minutes left. This is, it is so interesting to hear how 
you know, people from history, philosophy, from different spheres of life, and you've taken computer science and uh, doing such interesting things, you know, going forward. And uh, great advice you have for all of us here. And what else? Any other questions? Um, all right. I don't see any more questions. So let's hear a little bit about the favorite part of your job. Um, Let's hear each one of you. We can start with Sengor or anybody who would like to start, yeah. Sure, yeah. Um, I think my favorite part of my job uh, is honestly interacting with the people. We have a really great rapport. We have 100 people. It's a very small company. Um, when I was in the office, we had a little office scooter and I'd go around and you know say hi to people, catch up on you know what they're doing, how their, their work is coming, um, see if they need any help really with anything. Uh, and just wander around and say hi to people. I also like the electrical part of my job. Um, I mean, I'm not going to leave that part out. Um, mm -hmm. I like designing. I like problem solving. Um, just, you know, seeing how I can take a list of requirements for a product and make it something cool and then deliver that to the client. That's always, it's always something that's really enjoyable. Such a gratifying feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Carl, would you like to share about what's the most exciting part, the favorite part about your job? I really like my job. I can share a lot of things. Uh, very, very briefly, number one, I love, back when we had the office, I love the food. LinkedIn is, as a company, is famous for having an amazing cafeteria. I, that's not a joke. We have a Michelin star winning pastry chef wow. on, our, on our staff, and he makes the best pastries, him, him and his team. And so I really miss that, to be honest. Uh, it provides a lot of really great amenities. Something I really appreciate about uh, the work culture at LinkedIn is that it's very relaxed. It's very chill. Um, my manager, you know, expects great work of me, but is sort of very much a people first sort of person. That's that's the culture encouraged by the company from the CEO to the bottom. Uh, the the company is giving us a mental health day at the end of this month because they're like, you guys have been overworked. You guys just need to take time off. We're, we're making you take time off. Uh, and has been doing a lot of things like that to try to take care of us. And I'm pretty grateful to work for a company that tries to put its employees first. And so I think that's something I'm, I'm really um, proud of and grateful. Sure, thank you. And Denise? Yeah, uh, the perks, definitely miss the perks of work, uh, right, has something similar. We don't have a Michelin star uh, baker, but we do have really good, good food there and yeah free coffee and free like fitness classes and stuff like that and, and that's pretty nice uh, I think for me personally um like I've been a gamer my whole life so working in the games industry was just like a dream come so true sad. yeah it's it, it was a dream come true for me I like I, and but but mostly uh the thing I, I really enjoy about um Riot is so like I don't know if, if people in the audience, like, uh, you know, I don't know what schools they go, went to, but like, I went growing up, I like, I grew up in some pretty bad neighborhoods and I went to some pretty bad, like the school's quality uh, wasn't great. Like the teachers weren't very encouraging to for those who were trying to learn there. You know, it, it was very kind of toxic. And so like going, once I got to, to, to riot, I, it's, I, I feel like I finally found a group, like it's a company where the culture is so encouraging to those that just are interested in learning and growing themselves are so supportive. I yeah. So I feel like once I, you know, once I got there, I, I like, it's just the quality of people that you're around is just so much, it, it's, they're so encouraging and, and they help you grow. And, and we also, we're all gamers. I feel like I could be my most authentic self there. I, I it's, it's really a dream come true. And it's great to be able to like, deliver stuff to to our players that, and and have them respond you know in a positive way sometimes it's negative but we're like it's always this conversation mm -hmm. that we have with them so it's been very rewarding to work in the games industry so awesome. specifically riot yeah mm -hmm. so awesome to hear that and sandra will let you uh, share as well sure um very much the same i i feel extremely lucky and um uh, you know i have a lot of gratitude to, to be uh, working in the field of robotics. It's the thing I've loved for so long um, since I was really young and it makes me feel like I'm building towards the future and doing really cool, exciting things. Um, I also love being in part of a startup. Um, my, my, you know, I've, as I said, I've been in a couple of startups and the pace and the um, excitement that happens from what, during during the the process is just uh, it it 
it's hard to describe. It's it's really it can be so crazy and exciting, and you the growth is uh, often just like you're shooting up. And um, I think that is the most fun thing. I think uh, I, I can tell a short story. Um, we uh, a few years ago at my previous startup, we we were, we got funding, which which means that. Um, the company was funded by uh, some investors and we got $2 million and it was just, it was just the three people on the team. Mm -hmm. And so the, the excitement that we felt at that moment was like, it was like, wow, we really did something amazing. Um, And so it's that, I think that's like the, you know, that's the top of it. That's the best feeling for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you everyone. I hope you found this session informative and, and insightful as I did. Really want to thank all the panelists for describing their careers in tech. So wonderful to have you all. And hopefully it inspires a few of you to consider this wonderful progression. Um, thank you. Thank you for, I really enjoyed uh, this opportunity to be here. Thank you guys. Yes, thank you. And thank you Manju for moderating and uh, thank you everyone in the audience for participating, keeping the chat lively, asking great questions. Uh, also, thank you to Bay Area Science Festival for hosting this event. Thank you everyone uh, for, for coming and making this panel a success. Thank you guys, bye.